What is up everybody? Cubic here. Happy Vital Release Day. As promised, I'm back with more tutorials to add to my ultimate guide to mastering Vital. Today we are going over the Wavetable Editor, which honestly is probably one of my favorite Wavetable Editors of any synth I've used. And so yeah, we're just going to break it down for you so you can get the most out of the Vital Wavetable Editor. Hello. Please excuse me. All right, guys, we are back here with the Vital Init preset. Today, like I said, I'm going over the Wavetable Editor. So we're just going to go ahead and start things out with how do I drag in Wavetables I've created or use in other synths I enjoy. So it's actually really easy to just drag in Wavetables from synths like Serum and Phase Plant. So I'm going to go ahead and drag in the Basic Shapes table from Serum. And basically all you have to do is just you drag it over the wavetable on your oscillator and you just you you click the wavetable option and that means vital knows that this is already a wavetable created in another synth there's not much extra it has to do it just drags it right in and your wavetable functions the same way it would in whatever synth you're dragging it from so that's super easy super simple then we can always go in and edit everything later if we'd like but before we get into all that i'm also going to show you how to just drag in your own samples so i have this operator base one shot it's at the pitch of f and so basically we have two options here for dragging in your own samples there's the pitch slice option which basically vital detects the pitch of your sample and adjusts it accordingly but all in all it keeps your sample sounding the way it was meant to sound originally so that's one option the second option is to drag it into the vocode option, which adjusts the phase of your sample and cleans it up a bit. And so it won't completely sound like the original sample is meant to sound, but it'll sound cleaner and it'll be a bit more consistent and just adjusted to better work as a wavetable and vital. I prefer the vocode option most of the time, but it's really up to you and how it sounds to choose which one you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this base one shot in to the vocode option now we go into the wavetable editor and we see we have our one shot now vital should have detected the pitch automatically but just in case we want to make sure that it's at the right pitch if it's a very tonal sample if you go into the window size here and you type in the note that it's supposed to be at which is F in this case and the octave you'd like to put it at so I'll just put it at F3 it should adjust the pitch and window size for the sample automatically. So that should be in tune now. And now we can get started actually editing the sample. So next, what we're going to want to do is set the beginning and end points of our new sample. So basically, the way that Vital's Wavetable Editor works is quite similar to Phase Plant's Wavetable Editor or to any sort of editing software that uses keyframes such as After Effects and Adobe Premiere Pro. So if you have any experience in either of those things, this should be a bit easier for you to understand. Basically, you've got this little timeline here and you have the ability to create keyframes. And basically, each keyframe you can set certain settings. And basically, as you go along this timeline here or scroll through the frames of the wavetable, those settings will blend into the new settings that each new keyframe brings. So in this case, we're going to keep it simple and we're going to have a beginning keyframe and an end keyframe. So whatever setting we set at the beginning is going to be exactly the settings that we have when we start the wavetable. And then whatever we set at the end are going to be the settings that we get at the end of the wavetable. And as we, you scrub through, it'll kind of blend between those two keyframes. So like I said, we want to select the start and end points of this wavetable. As you can see, there's a lot of silence and inconsistency over in this part. But starting out, it looks like it's at a good place for the start of the wavetable. So I'm just going to click on the end keyframe. And I'm going to drag, if you can see, there's this little highlighted purple thing right here. I'm going to drag this to a good point in the sample where I think it would be a nice end to the wavetable. So I've select right here. So if we drag through, our wavetable should be scrolling between the start point here and the end point here. If you click this one, we've got our start point. You click this one, we got our end point. <laughs> 
So that doesn't sound the best as we scroll through. And real quick, one way to have a good grasp of what your wavetable sounds like is to put this on envelope, frequency of one one, and then just snap it to your frame. So you can get a nice scan going through your wavetable. So this isn't the best sample to use, at least at the moment, but what we can do is mess around with the different different blend style and phase style to get a smoother cleaner blending of all the individual frames so we're just going to click through all these and hear how they affect the wavetable differently file blend time blend spectral So spectral sounds the best, then maybe I'll mess around with changing the phase style. So it seems like the phase style is kind of the cleanest in terms of this one shot. It sounds like the original bass one shot had a lot of flanging and phasing going on. So that's partially why it doesn't sound very clean. So it probably wasn't the best example, but I'm just going to use this as a way to show you more cool modifications and things we can do to the sample to kind of beef it up and give it more harmonic and cleaner content. So those are our options up here. We have the ability to normalize everything so that it just stays more consistent. And then we have the two, the phase style, the blend style, uh, window fade, which I'm not completely sure what it does, but I think it has to do with like the different frames and stuff and how they fade in between each other. I'm not 100% sure on that, so if you know what that is, uh, please comment down below. There's still there's not a manual out yet, so a lot of this is just either trial and error or doing my own research. Since this is such a empty feeling sample, I'm going to go ahead and add a source. Now we have three different types of sources you can add to the Vital Wavetable Editor. To start things off, there is the wave source where you can basically draw your own wave shapes in this little editor here and then adjust different harmonics. And you have different ways you can blend this. So for instance, if I create a second keyframe over here, I can change how this reacts. And then it'll blend between the two. So I honestly added way too many harmonics in this side, so it's not really cleaning things up. Sounds a lot better over here. We're going to change how, they, how this blends. As you can hear, on this side, things are just not very clean. So what I'm going to do is actually adjust the start point of the, the original sample to just a better, a cleaner place. So there's less evolution in this wavetable at the moment, but it is a lot cleaner now. And it's got this weird kind of flangey timbre to it, which can be pretty interesting, especially if you FM it with other oscillators. So our next option for sources that we can add is something called a line source, which has less harmonic customization um, than the wave source. It's a more simple editor to just create very standard types of lines. So if I wanted, I could make a square wave like so, boom, or I can adjust these in other ways. It kind of works similar to like how the LFO shape editor works. And you can also, by adding keyframes, you can adjust how this works. So we can completely flip it if we'd like. And then maybe I want just a I don't know, a saw wave at the end.
Now, this is by no means <laughs> the, the most quality wavetable I've ever created, but this is just for education's sake. And so then on top of these two additions that we can all layer with that original sample, you can also add more samples. So basically all you do is drag your sample into this purple area. I'll make another endpoint over here and set that to like right there and boom like I was setting out to in the beginning that's a lot thicker there's more content it feels cleaner could be probably used really well as some sort of growl preset or something like that so we have so many ways to just layer and add more to whatever samples you add or you can just start out with like creating your own wave shapes and things like that so those are the different source options now we're going to move on to the different sorts of modifiers you can add to these we've got six different modifiers available to add in the wave editor and they work completely the same where you create keyframes along the timeline and then at each keyframe you set settings and it just blends between the keyframes so to start off we've got phase shift which basically shifts the phase of the waveform we'll add it right here and you'll notice that there's a, a bunch of different styles and basically it allows you to shift just the basic phase just like that, but you can also shift based on different harmonics, like even and odd harmonics. Now, this isn't gonna have the biggest effect right now because we're just shifting the phase of the initial sample we added, which at this point, it's more these different wave and line sources that are making up most of the sounds that we're hearing. So not the biggest effect, but basically when you're editing wavetables on your own and experimenting, mess with shifting the phase and the phase of different harmonics, it can create cool effects and cool evolutions throughout your table. We're just gonna remove that and move on to the next one, which is wave window. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this initial audio source and just keep it on these two so that you can hear these effects much better. So yeah, wave window is next. And basically wave window creates like a fade in on the edges of the waveform with separate controls for the left and the right and different types of fades. So basically you can use this to, for instance, um, this wave that we made, maybe I only want this to come in on the second half of the wave table. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a fade so that it fades in like that. So now we have it so that this cool wave table that we made kind of just fades in on the right side of the timeline. Therefore, it's like a gradual, like it gradually blends in to that original audio file source we added. So that's really cool. You can really use that to create different sections of your wavetable with different sources. You can also just, there's different types of fades and they add different amounts of like drive to your wavetable. Then we also have this frequency filter here, which is basically you're adding frequency filters into your wavetable. So as you can see, there's a low pass, high pass. So you can basically low pass the source within your wavetable, and you can also automate the cutoff and the shape of those filters throughout the timeline. But something really cool is you also have the ability to add a combs filter. And so then you can automate that, create a keyframe, alter the cutoff. And so now we have some wild comb filtering going on inside of our wavetable. And something really cool is if you do the text-to-speech wavetable, um, you can add combs filter to that within the wavetable editor and get some really crazy results. And don't forget, you can just in general use those text to speech wavetables in the wavetable editor and add all sorts of cool effects to whatever text you created in there. So then we also have here the slew limiter, 
which the slew limiter, it's a bit weirder, but it basically limits how steeply a waveform can move up and down. Basically anything steeper than the setting gets flattened into a straight line at that angle. So it's a kind of weird like wavetable limiter. <laughs> And so that's one of those things that you kind of just have to play around with and it really depends on the wavetable. Um, with certain wavetables, like when you down limit it, it'll basically smooth things out and, and make things a bit less harsh. And then in other tables, for instance, when you up limit it, it'll make things more like shrill, lasery almost. So that's definitely one to just experiment and, and see how it affects your wavetables. Um, then we also have a wave folder, which is basically a type of wave shaping going on within the wavetable. It basically boosts the amplitude of the waveform. And if any samples go beyond um, plus or minus one, they get reflected on top of each other in the other direction. So it basically kind of like folds your waves into themselves and kind of mirrors it. <laughs> So that sounds wild. Basically, it really, again, depends on your wave table. So like if you use, for instance, the wave folder on like a saw wave, it'll basically bend and mirror the saw wave onto itself in such a way that it starts to sound like sine fold distortion, which is really cool. And in terms of this one, it turns it into just this noisy. So that's just crazy. And then finally, we've got the wave warp which basically bends the waveform in different directions. The X warp bends the waveform horizontally. The Y warp bends the wavetable vertically. And then we have these X asymmetric option and Y asymmetric option, which X asymmetric basically warps the wave left and right instead of towards the center and the edges. And then the Y asymmetric basically warps the wave up and down instead of towards and away from zero. So those are all the modifiers and the sources. A lot of this is very much just things that you should just mess around with, spend an hour or so just putting in different basic shapes and different samples and just seeing how you can mangle them up and create some wild sounds like that. I don't know how I'd use that, but that has some really cool tonality and movement inside that wavetable. And I was just completely random just showing you guys what all the different settings do. So I'd say it's a pretty intuitive wavetable editor once you get to know it and understand it. And uh, real quick, there's also the ability to save your wavetables. Um, you can import wavetables, export your wavetables, export your wavetable to a wave file, which can then be used as wavetables in other synths, as well as you could use it as a sample. Then you can also synthesize your preset to a tape. So basically, you could just synthesize this wavetable you made back into this and then just go hard on it all over again. But that should be all the settings. These are some viewing options, I think, just like the way this is all displayed. But other than that, that should be everything that is available in the wavetable editor. I hope that gave you a better understanding of how to use this wavetable editor so you can get started making your own wavetables. If you've been enjoying this series, let me know with a like and a subscribe and definitely comment down below any questions you have, anything else you want to learn about Vital, anything you'd like me to elaborate on or future tutorial ideas because I'm stoked to be finally making some production tutorials and I've been having so much fun getting to know the vital synth and getting into the nitty gritty so that I can explain it all to you guys and help you pick up this synth as quick as possible. So uh, with that being said, my name's Cubic and I will see you guys in the next vital guide.